Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk about grids. Again, but this one's different, I promise. Please keep watching. All right, so if you're following us on Instagram, at Workbench TV, you probably saw that I posted this. And what we're going to do today is make this little, like, grid pattern. It's procedurally built, and it can animate pretty easily. And actually, if you're signed up for one of my patron levels that gives you access to textures... These are actually already in there for you to download. All right, let's take a closer look at this grid. So you can see we have these squares and then we have these like 45 degree squares and then we have like little dots. And there's actually some smaller boxes in here that weren't featured in the original design. So let's first take a look at how the squares are made. It's really simple. It's just a layer with fractal noise on it that has some evolution on it to which I've added a loop out continue expression. Then it's the mosaic effect and find edges. This comp is 2200 pixels wide so it'll just about cover the diagonal area of an HD comp. All right, so let's close that. So you notice I have the horizontal and vertical blocks set to 110, which means my blocks will be 20 pixels wide. And then the last thing is just the fine edges effect. I've adjusted the contrast and the brightness of the fractal noise effect to get this look. But you can also put levels or whatever on there if you want to change the way these actually look. There's no real way to control the thickness of these edges with a fine edges effect, but you can use things like simple choker or even levels to bring the size of them down. I believe the thickness also has to do with the contrast between the adjacent pixels. So you're gonna have to tweak this to your taste. All right, so the next thing I did was turn this thing 45 degrees and layer it over itself. And I thought it was perfect at first, but then I realized my squares didn't really line up exactly like I wanted them to. And then I realized that the diagonal length of the square is not the same as the sides. So how did I figure out how to get it exactly that way? Back to geometry. I did this way back in tutorial two, but since then we have a lot more new people and they might not have seen that. So let's go over this really quickly. You might remember this from high school, and feel free to skip ahead, but I'm also going to explain how this exactly applies to what we're doing. So maybe you want to stick around. So the Pythagorean theorem states that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. c squared is this line known as the hypotenuse, and a and b are both of the sides of the triangle that are adjacent to the right angle. So we have these squares in our grid, right? So if you were to cut those squares in half, the hypotenuse would be the line that runs between the corners. So for our squares, each side of this is 20. But that doesn't really matter here, because what I'm trying to do is figure out how much do I need to scale my rotated squares so that their edges form the diagonal between the corners of the other squares. So since I'm just worrying about scale, we're gonna say that our non-rotated squares are 100%. So the sides are 100% by 100%. For easy math, let's just divide by 100. So we got one to one. So we're gonna have one squared plus one squared equals the distance between these corner points squared. One squared is one, so that's one plus one. So d squared is equal to two. So we're gonna take the square root of that, and that's about 1.4142. So we're gonna multiply that back by 100 to get our percentage. So it's going to be 141.42%. So in my main build right here, I took these 45 degree squares and I scaled them by 141.42%. And you'll notice that that's not what this says because I thought they were too big. So I just divided by two, which is nice because if we zoom in here, you can see that technically I get two squares per normal square here. So if you use that 141, the squares are like this big. You can also double it if you wanted to. And that would make your line go all the way out to here and out to here and over here and whatever. So if you divide it, you can get smaller and smaller squares. And that presented a little bit of a problem that if I turn this motion tile off, you can see it ends just here. So what I did was just add some motion tile to it. I mirrored the edges and now it fills the whole thing. And then I just made these dots, which are basically the same thing as tutorial 77, the glitchy dot LED thing. That's actually its official title. And the only difference between that tutorial and this one is the other one. I wanted the dots basically in the center of our mosaic. And here I want it on the corners. So all I did was start my grid dots. As you can see right here, 10 over and 10 down because the original point would be right here in the middle like of this square. So if we move over 10, which is half the width of this box and then move down 10, we get to the corner. So that gives us dots on all the corners. If you wanted more frequent dots or whatever, you could change this width value. All right, and then the last thing is just if you wanna put some of these little inner boxes in here, this is also basically the same thing as the grid setup for the dots. But instead of having thick grid lines so that our boxes are really tiny, we made them pretty thin. Then we just threw a fine edges over top of that and then messed around with some levels after the edges and also after the noise. So this bottom noise layer is just fractal noise, mosaic, and levels. And I believe I actually used the same exact fractal noise that I did for everything else. And in case you're wondering, it's set to basic and soft linear. The contrast and brightness though are different than the other ones because I didn't want as many boxes. You can change that to taste as well. And that's pretty much the whole setup to make a mat like this. And as a bonus for everybody that always asks how I make this stuff, this kind of happened slightly by accident and then I kind of rolled with it. I was initially doing some other text displacement type stuff. And because this logo wasn't initially continuously rasterized, it scaled my displacement map 
to make it like really tiny. And I thought that was actually really cool the way it looked. So I actually made a really tiny noise map in a pre-comp so I can get the whole thing to work. It was actually cutting off some of the top, the way it was working out and grow bounds and stuff didn't work. So that gave me the bulk of what's around the workbench logo. So because the tiny noise mat really was only about as big as the logo, I took the regular mat, I scaled it down and I put some motion tile on it. And then I used a JS placement displacement map as track mats to kind of make different colors of these grids and layer them on top of each other. And then I also layered that mat over top of here and I set it to our green blue color. And then I drew a bunch of masks over top of it to mask it in where I wanted it to be. This orange thing is an illustrator file that has a tiny grid in it that I was drawing boxes and stuff kind of like Ashthorpe does. And then I was going to tilt this in 3D, but what I ended up using was just a corner pin adjustment layer. I made a gradient and then I threw a camera blur on it. And then because I wanted to go extra crazy, I threw a LUT on top of that. And that LUT was from IWLT BAP, I think. I'm not really sure what that stands for, but I think it's from a free pack that I got from them a while ago. And that kind of unified all the colors a little bit. There's also some like other noise things in here and whatnot, but that's the bulk of it. So I got to this by messing around in After Effects and just seeing what I could come up with. So hopefully you guys can take an example from this and go and make your own cool shit. All right, guys, as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with our blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.